All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, before I introduce our next speaker, let me just remind you that there will be a Gather Town Meet the Speaker opportunity after this talk uh, featuring Lars Hasselholt and Akil Matthew. Um, and without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce Jenny Wilson from the University of Michigan, who will take us toward conjectures of Church Farb Putnam and Rognes. Thanks, Jenny. That's good. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, as advertised, I will be talking about two related projects. Um, uh, I prefer to keep the mask on, though, if it's an issue, I'll take it off. Uh, Put to the mask. Oh my gosh! Do not do that. Along the V. What about now? Should I take the mask off? Well. <laughs> I could continue introducing the talk. So, uh, right, this talk, as advertised, is toward conjectures of Church Farb Putman and Rungus, neither of which we will resolve. Does this make a difference? People on the other side? Much better. All right, the mask was the problem. All right, this is my first time in masks indoors in two years. Unmasked. All right. Great. So uh, the project will be, uh, or projects will be joint with um, various subsets of the following co authors Benjamin Group, Jeremy Miller, Peter Potts, and Robin Sosa. Wait. So first, let me introduce these conjectures of Church Farb and Putman. This is a project that concerns the cohomology of um, the special linear group over the integers with rational coefficients. And let me remind us a little bit about the shape of what we know. So first of all, a reminder that Borel and Serre computed the virtual cohomological dimension of these groups. So the VCD uh, is known. It is n choose two. Importantly, it's quadratic in n. The good work of Burrell and Sarah. Okay. And uh, notably, this implies that these cohomology groups are going to be zero above this VCD. Okay. If we look at low uh, values of Q, then the classical work of Borel says we have homological stability okay so we have these isomorphisms from homology uh, for n and n plus one Um, great. So in this range, we have stability in some linear stable range. Uh, 
And uh, the stable groups are generally understood. So uh, I guess in contrast, this project, this conjecture of Churchfarb Putman, is going to focus instead on the cohomology in very high degrees, high values of Q. We're interested in setting the cohomology close to the VCD. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm probably writing too low on this board. Let me swap these boards. Okay, so here is, in that direction, a motivating question, uh, which is open and I will not answer. The motivating question is, what is the largest value, or the largest degree Q, where we have non-zero homology. Okay, so right, this is open. A reminder that it follows uh, from the theory of virtual cohomological dimension that there is some uh, twisted system of, of uh, coefficients over the rationals with the property that if we look at cohomology in the VCD, with respect to those twisted coefficients, it will be non-vanishing. But from the definition of the VCD, it doesn't speak to whether or not this group vanishes when Q is equal to the VCD. So this question, in fact, is, is open. This question of what, like, where do we have, what is our highest non-vanishing cohomology group? Again, I won't answer that question. But in that direction, here's a conjecture uh, of Church Farb Putman. Okay. So the conjecture states that if we look at what I'll call the codimension I cohomology of these groups, so if we look at the cohomology. Um, I degrees below the VCD, they conjecture that this vanishes uh, in a linear range. All right, so uh, I should have hidden my graph, but let me pull down this, this turn again for a moment. They're, they're conjecturing that there's some range that's linearly below the VCD, where we have vanishing of these cohomology groups. Okay. Uh, the VCD, so right, somehow like the rational homological dimension is smaller than the VCD. So the, the VCD is correct, there, there, are, there is some twisted system of coefficients. So the VCD, right, the, the formal definition of VCD is it is the common cohomological dimension of the torsion free finite index subgroups. And it, in, it implies for us that it implies the existence of some system of twisted coefficients with the property that you have non vanishing cohomology in the VCD with those twisted coefficient systems, but it does not. It does not speak to whether or not, if you take trivial rational coefficients, whether or not that group vanishes. Yeah, thank you. Are there other questions? Um, okay, great. So conjecturally, we have vanishing of these uh, co-dimension I groups in a linear range below the VCD. Okay. And the state of knowledge on this conjecture is as follows. So it's known, this conjecture is known to hold when I is zero in the case of Z, or in fact, if you replace Z with a Euclidean number ring here, then we get vanishing 
of these groups in the VCD that follows from work of Lee and Sharba from the 70s. The case of I equals one was proved a few years ago by Church and Putman. And then earlier this year, um, joint with these co-authors, we proved the case that I equals two. So we also have vanishing in this range of the co-dimension two cohomology. All right. And in higher co-dimension, it's open. OK. So right, the, the key to studying these high degree homology groups is or else their duality. OK, and so this is an identification of the co-dimension I cohomology group with, well, in particular with trivial rational coefficients, with any rational representation, with the uh, I degree homology of these groups, but twisted by a representation of SLNZ. This is the Steinberg module, which I'll define in a minute. Okay. And so these, these groups, they don't satisfy Poincare duality, but they do satisfy this twisted variation on Poincare duality. We can uh, study these high degree cohomology groups by studying low degree homology groups at the expense of working with twisted coefficients. All right, so this isomorphism um, comes from Borel and Sarah's study of the associated symmetric spaces to the special linear groups. This um, the definition of the Steinberg module is related to the topology of the boundary of a bordification they defined on the symmetric space. And specifically, we can define it uh, in terms of a family of simplicial complexes called the, the Teats buildings. Okay, okay so the, the Teats buildings associated to, let's say, let's say F is a, is a field. In this case, it will be the rational numbers. The, the Teats buildings are uh, n minus two dimensional simplicial complexes defined very concretely as follows. The vertices correspond to uh, proper non-zero subspaces of f to the n. And the simplices correspond to flags. So in other words, this is the realization of the poset of uh, non-zero proper subspaces of Fn. And Solomon and Teach proved that these Teach buildings um, are spherical. So they proved that Uh, we have the, the homotopy type of a wedge of spheres of dimension n minus 2. And so, with that said, we can define our Steinberg module. The Steinberg module, or rather, these, these peak buildings uh, up to homotopy equivalence are the boundary of this, this fortification of the symmetric spaces. And so then it follows that these, these Steinberg modules, the dualizing module is, or the definition 
is the top degree or the single degree, single non vanishing degree, reduced homology of the Teach building. All right. Great. And so the upshot of that, well, right, as we know, uh, one way that we could compute these groups is by taking a flat resolution of our Steinberg modules by FLNZ representation. Oh, question? Um, oh, yeah, sorry. So the question is how many spheres are there in this wedge? Um, right. So, I mean, in terms of cardinality, if you have a finite field, you'll have a finite number of spheres. If you have a field like the rational numbers, then you have countably infinitely many, and there are bases that you can write down, um, or right, you can, you can kind of uh, index them in terms of certain subspaces in these buildings. I'll give you later, or in fact, just in a few minutes, I'll give you a generating set for, right, well, I'll give you a generating set that's not a basis for this homology group uh, momentarily. Yeah, good question. Um, oh yeah, right. So, thank you. So, we were saying we can compute these homology groups by taking a flat resolution of our Steinberg module by, by FLNZ representations, taking the invariance and taking homology of the complex okay, by, by definition. And so, uh, somehow this means that the key to this entire program is trying to produce nice resolution of the Steinberg module, where nice means that they're somehow small enough that I have a hope of being able to compute covariance. Okay, so right, we want We want nice flat resolutions of this Steinberg module. And then in turn, the key to doing that is going to be using simplicial methods. All right. Oh, and let me actually, oh, maybe I'll skip this one. I'll make the remark out loud. A remark that we could similarly uh, define teach buildings, for example, for a PID, replacing F, F with a PID by looking at some ends instead of subspaces. But in that case, exercise, there is a natural identification between the teeth building for this ring and for its field of fractions. So in that sense, this, this definition is as general as we want for current purposes. Okay. Uh, great. So, yes, yeah, if you, if you take, if you take Z or and you take Q, that will result in the same. Because of That's it. For example. Okay. So uh, let me Oops. comment on. Uh, Right, I promised a generating set for this Steinberg module, and this is also due Solomon and Heaps. This one is, this generating set, sorry, is not a basis, but it is a generating set. Um, so our Steinberg module is generated by apartment classes. A. Let me see what that means. Classes. These are the homology classes that come from spheres in the Keats building, defined as follows. So, given a frame for for F n, so given a decomposition um, of our vector space into F n as a direct sum of lines. L sub i, there is associated to this decomposition a sphere 
an n minus two sphere in the Keats building, which I define to be the full subcomplex on vertices corresponding to uh, sums, direct sums of proper non-empty subsets of this collection of lines. Okay. And it is an exercise for everyone to convince yourself, let me draw a picture in the case n equals two, an exercise to convince yourself that these subcomplexes really are spheres. Here's the case for n equals three. I have lines L1, L2, and L3. And here's the, the um, apartment associated to this particular frame. And in general, this subcomplex you can naturally identify with the barycentric subdivision of the boundary of an n minus 1 simplex. And so for each such frame, we get a sphere in the Keats building. And um, right, the upshot, right, we get at least if I if I choose an ordering on my lines, which gives me an orientation, so the signs are well defined. I'm going to get uh, associated to my frame a generator for the Steinberg module. Okay. Great. How am I doing for time? Okay. Um. Okay, and so again, our goal towards this goal of finding nice resolutions of the Steinberg module, we somehow want to, you know, starting with, for example, these generators, and in fact, there, there are associated relations, we want to somehow refine these generators to get something that is smaller and understandable with respect to the action of SLN Z. And let me, maybe I'll just very quickly comment on the case of the top degree cohomology, the top degree cohomology of SLN Z, which vanishes by work of Lee and Charba. So, for example, for n greater than or equal to 2, we want to show uh, to get vanishing of this top degree group. Um, well, by our uh, statement of Borel fair duality, we can identify this group with the degree zero homology of the uh, of SLN bed with coefficients in the Steinberg module. So that's going to be the same as the covariance of the Steinberg module with respect to this action of SLN bed. And so we're done if we can come up with a generating set of the Steinberg module with the property that all of the generators provably vanish in co-invariance. And so, right, so here's an exercise um, which follows from, this is a result of Ash Rudolph, this follows from the statement, this fact that, in fact, this is generated, we don't need all of these apartment classes. It is enough to take apartment classes that come not just for a frame for Fn, so in our case that's, that's p to the n, but it's enough to take frames for Zn. It's enough to take what we call integral frames. 
So frames that come from a basis, not just over the field, but in fact over the integers. Okay, so the fact is that we have generation um, by integral apartment classes. Uh, so, i.e., these are classes that come from an integral frame. Um, oh, sorry, let me do this here, sorry, these are, these are cues, I'm specializing now to the case of the rational numbers, pardon me, okay. Okay, so I claim, I claim the vanishing of this group follows from the fact, from this fact, and the way that you can check this is I claim that if we have a frame of Zn, then you can find an element of FLN Z that induces an odd degree permutation on this set of lines. And so that element is going to reverse the orientation of the associated apartment class. And so that element is going to negate of the associated apartment, so it will negate the apartment class, it will negate the homology class, and therefore that generator will vanish in these co-invariants. Okay. So, uh, excellent, right. So you can, you can see if I can find, in this case, if I can find an element of SL2 that swaps L1 and L2 as, as lines while fixing L3, that's going to induce a reflection on this whole apartment that will negate the corresponding element of the Steinberg module. And so by this argument, all of these elements, all of these generators vanish in co-invariance when we get vanishing of this top degree. Okay. And so this is supposed to illustrate that the whole game with studying these high degree cohomology groups is coming up with resolutions of the Steinberg module with good integrality properties. Somehow we want generators and relations in higher syzygies that are indexed um, by collections of objects that come from bases for Zn and not just Qn. And uh, Without too many more details, let me just say that the key to getting resolutions with good integrality properties is to study conceptual complexes that are built out of bases for Zn and to somehow compare those to the peak building in a suitable way. Okay, so um, right to so the goal is to get resolutions of the Steinberg module with good integrality properties. And then the key is to compare the peak building. Uh, to um, simplicial complexes built from bases or Zn in some sense. Okay, and uh, I guess especially for those of you watching from Germany, I think here perhaps we'll speak more about uh, this project and related projects in his talk tomorrow morning. Great. Okay. Any questions about the Pittsburgh Putman conjecture? If not, I'm going to switch gears and talk about a different project, which 
uh, will turn out to be related to that one. This is a project on the uh, long use conjecture. And this is exciting for me because this is my first encounter with algebraic K theory. So let me start by stating a very concrete conjecture. Um, I have 15 minutes left, is that right? Yes, okay, great. So, ah, thank you. Okay, 15 plus. All right. So, okay, let's take R now to be a Euclidean ring. Okay. And I'm going to define another family of simple complexes. This is called the common basis complex. Okay, so this is a family of complexes where the vertices, again, are going to be indexed by um, proper, non, uh, proper non zero subspaces uh, or uh, some ends now of Rn, direct some ends. And the um, uh, the simplices, unlike with the heat buildings, the simplices are uh, sets of these summands that have what I'll call the common basis property. Okay, so let me say what that means. Same course as in your algebra problem. This is the condition that there exists some basis for Rn that um, such that every single one of the spaces, the sum ends in this list, is spanned by a subset of the spaces. So there exists a basis B e for Rn such that each each of i is scanned by a subset of the basis. Okay. So again, really concretely, let me draw, draw like a little picture of something inside this complex. Here is a picture of a loop in the complex written with respect to the common basis on the standard basis, E1, E2, etc. Okay, so here's here's a picture of a loop, and there's there's no simplex, there's no two simplex inside this loop, because even though these pairwise have common bases, the three of them don't. Um, but I could cone off this loop by adding the plane spanned by the first two. Uh, by the first two um, uh, standard basis elements. And then again, I could cone off this whole thing by adding any complementary subspace. So, okay, so now I have some uh, picture of a free disk in my complex. Okay, so just to be illustrative, there's a little piece of the complex. And very concretely, this conjecture of uh, Wagner's is the conjecture that the homology of this complex is supported in a single degree. Oh, and maybe maybe I'll add the comment. So notice this is this is a two to the n minus uh three uh dimensional complex so the the maximal dimensional simplices in this complex each correspond to a choice of basis if you choose a basis you can take all proper non-empty subsets of that basis that will give you a maximal dimensional subspace here so the complex 
is, uh, let me add this, it is 2 to the n minus 3 dimensional. Okay. But the conjecture is the conjecture is that the homology of this complex is concentrated in degree uh, two, two, sorry, two times n minus three. Okay. And uh, Long is showed. Long is showed that uh, the high degree homology or sorry homology group vanish. So he showed it suffices to show to prove this that the complex is two n minus four connected. Okay. Here's the statement of the conjecture. Very concrete. These complexes are highly connected. The motivation for this conjecture comes from the following. Okay. The motivation comes from Oswald K theory. Okay. So um, again, carrying on with R being a fixed Euclidean ring, associated to R, uh, I've learned, there is a construction called the Walthausen S dot construction, uh, which gives us one way to build um, a spectrum computing the K theory of R. So in this case, we're going to build build spectrum um, R uh, from uh, categories whose objects are diagrams, they're, they're lattices of um, R modules with injective map with specified footings. So it's just making diagrams um plantly generated uh, projective R modules. Okay. And uh Rongi studied what happens when you filter these um these categories by the ranks of these R modules. So if we uh start over here, if we filter by rank then we can obtain a filtration on AR by sub spectra. Uh, so filter by rank, then we obtain and filtration on our spectrum. And so what, what Romney showed is that if you look at the associated graded of this filtration, then there is some stable equivalence to the symmetric spectrum on uh, the suspension of these uh, these common basis co uh, complexes after taking uh, based homotopy quotients. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. I'm writing too quickly. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you for touching the ad. Hello. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, great. So uh, the upshot 
is that we can study the uh, rank uh, spectral sequence. So the, the, there's a homology spectral sequence associated to this filtration. And the upshot is that this conjecture on the high connectivity of these buildings um, this conjecture would imply um, a vanishing line plus a simplification of the E1 page of the associated homology spectral sequence. So here's some motivation, right? So specifically, it would show a vanishing result below the diagonal, in the simplified form of the E1 page. Okay. And here are some facts that are very intriguing to me. Um, uh, so, First is that in light of computer calculations that have been done, if the conjecture held for the integers, this is open, but if the conjecture held for the integers, this would imply this would imply vanishing of p12 of the integers at smallest degree unknown group. And it would also imply, I think this is less obvious, but it would also imply the um, the church for appointment conjecture that I stated earlier. Uh, with a worse range, with a worse stable range. Okay. This is open. The case of R is the case R equals Z is open. Uh, but here's what we do know about this conjecture. Um, okay. Uh, We know, uh, in fact, by, by work of Rodness, that it holds the small values of n equals one, two, and three. Um, Radius Cooper and Randall Williams they proved um, high connectivity. Uh, so they proved the high connectivity result for the homotopy portion. Of the homotopy orbit spectrum. Um, for a class of local rings that includes infinite fields. And um, Right, the latest addition to this list is in work joint with Miller and Puck. Uh, this is this is definitely in progress work. The work it's not completed yet, but we believe that we can prove the conjecture for all people. Okay, and. In the last two minutes, let me very quickly at least gesture at what goes into the proof. Um, do, I, do I have license to go a couple minutes over time, you said? Okay, thank you. So very, very quickly, right? Um, so here are some ideas. We go into the proof. 
So first is, I claim that we can assemble the um, Steinberg modules into uh, a well into an associative ring with multiplication given by uh, some choice of block embeddings of my matrices. So I can define this on those apartment classes that I said earlier generate. And there's something to check that this multiplication is well defined, but I claim that it is. So if I choose some block embedding of my matrices, then this gives me an operation as follows. So unfortunately, because it depends on the source of block structure, it's not commutative um, on the node, but uh, we are going to view, we're going to view this structure as a monoid in the following setting. Okay, so we're going to view as monoid in um, in what I'll call the LF module. So by this I mean functors functors from I guess the the groupoid of general linear groups into a uh, uh, into uh, a billion groups and um, so Okay, so very concretely, these are going to be sequences of abelian groups with um, GLNF actions on them. And these come with uh, multiplication given by a convolution. Um, great. So sorry, I'm I'm cheating now. But anyway, so right. So I'm going to view this as what I'll call a skew commutative ring um, in these GLF modules. And so the idea um, the idea of the proof. This idea is to study is to study the sequence of complexes E K and R that interpolate interpolate between the Keats building and um, the um, basis complex. Okay, and for sorry, one more board and then I'll finish. For k from infinity, um, we can interpret we can interpret the homology of the complexes. Um, as derived EK and decomposables in the sense of the theory developed by Gladius and Cooper's and Randall Williams, the derived EK and decomposables of this Steinberg ring. All right. And then from there, we can show 
vanishing by induction on K. We show the vanishing of the homology groups in a range for one value of K implies it for the next. Um, and in fact, it's in this whole proof, it's the base case of this induction that requires the assumption that R is a zero. Okay, so I'm over time. I apologize. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Are there any Canadian questions? <laughs>